soul force. He not only spawned cloth, he spawned lessons. And the methodology and lifestyle that altered the course of the world. The biblical writer John would say, In him the word became flesh and dwelt amongst the people. While referring to Jesus, this has great application to Gandhi. For too many, there is a huge gap between word and flesh. Between what is said and what is meant and what is done, Gandhi closed the gap. Following in the footsteps of great African-American leaders like Dr. Howard Thurman, Dr. Mordecai Johnson, Reverend James Lawson, a devout student and practitioner of nonviolence and war resistance, Dr. Benjamin E. Mays, Dr. King's college president and mentor, came to, to India. Dr. King made a five-week pilgrimage to India, hosted by Prime Minister Nehru. At the feet of Hindus, he listened, learned, and studied comparative religions and shared influences. A devoted Christian, Dr. King, said of Gandhi, Gandhi was probably the first person in history to lift the love ethic of Jesus above me into action between individuals into a powerful and effective social force. The question that troubled him, how does one carry out a social reform. He said in the nonviolent resistance of Gandhi, he found the only morally and practically sound method open to oppressed people in their struggle for freedom. He said there are two types of laws, just and unjust. An unjust law is a code that is out of harmony with the moral law. An unjust law is a code by which a numerical or powerful majority Group compels a minority group to obey, but does not make binding on itself. One who breaks an unjust law must do so openly, lovingly, and with the willingness to accept penalty. I struggle to embrace Gandhi's tactics. Dr. King embraced nonviolence, humility, and dignity, not merely as a, a tactic, but as a way of life. He felt like Gandhi that mass protests could not merely change laws, they must be in transforming and change hearts and minds. Our willingness to go to jail with dignity and free of fear, to turn jail cells into classrooms and prayer closets, and effectively use boycotts of non cooperation with the oppressors has in it reverberating sounds of Gandhi. Reverend James Lawson, who studied Gandhi's teachings while visiting India with Fellowship of Reconciliation for three years, became the primary teacher of nonviolence in many of the civil rights movement. His philosophy is found rooted in the statement of purpose that he wrote, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, the student protest movement of 1960s that Dr. King helped to initiate. He said, and I quote, we reaffirm the philosophical or religious ideal of nonviolence as the foundation of our purpose, the presupposition of our faith, and the manner of our action. Nonviolence, as it grows out from Judaic Christian tradition, seeks a social order of justice permeated by love. To nonviolence, courage displaces fear, love transforms hate. Acceptance dissipates prejudice. Hope ends despair. Justice for all overthrows injustice by appealing to inconscience and standing on the moral nature of human existence. Nonviolence nurtures the atmosphere in which reconciliation and justice become actual possibilities. No doubt, Gandhi was in the DNA of our struggle to change America and then thus had such a powerful impact upon the world. For the years after Dr. King's assassination, in 60 years after the martyrdom of Gandhi, let's explore some of Gandhi's authentic power. Through his teachings and insights, there is more power in giving than in receiving. There's more power in sacrifice than in greed and surplus. Resist evil with non-cooperation. Hate the sin and not the sinner. 
In battle, leave room for reconciliation and redemption. A German philosopher once said, lies run fast, but they have short legs. Let me hasten to say, however, truth makes long-lasting strides. Truth is a long-distance runner. Dr. King would often say, truth crushed to the earth will rise again.